very long time. It's definitely a part of who I am and what I do, and uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, what we're going to discuss quickly is my quick story, why I am and here, how, why I'm here today, and how I got where I am today. Uh, then we're going to talk about my primary topic, which is essentially finding your passion, following your dream, and going after something you really want to accomplish. So that's really that's what I did. Um, so when I was in high school, I didn't really like school. I wasn't really a school person per se. Um, I went to class and I attended class because there was basketball and there was girls and there was friends, and so that's why I went to high school. If there wasn't those things, I probably never would have gone. Um, but when I graduated high school, I uh, didn't really know what I wanted to do. My whole family had gone to university. Everybody had a degree. Um, that was kind of the expectation, is that I would just go on to school and go do stuff. Um, and I really had no interest in doing that, so I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm, I'm done school. I'm just going to have fun. I'm going to bartend. I'm going to travel. I'm just going to have a good time. And that's, that's exactly what I did. I, I took a job at a, at a restaurants. Uh, I was bar managing for a while. I was just really just having a good time. Um, I always felt like I had something missing. Like there was something more out there that I could be doing or I should be doing. Or, you know, I kind of had lack, lack of purpose, I would say. Um, and when I was 22, 21, I got offered a job running a, a hotel in Calgary. Um, full food and beverage manager, paid like $60,000 a year. At the time, it was a really good job to be offered. Um, and I thought, you know, I thought, okay, this is, a, this is a great opportunity, brand new hotel, you get to, you know, design my own menus, do all this cool stuff. Um, and I honestly, that, about a, three days after getting a job offer, I not only denied the job, job offer, but I quit my existing job. So I basically said, not only do I not want to do this job, I don't even want to be in this industry at all. So I quit. And I looked for work overseas. And so what I did is I went and worked in Guam. And I worked at a resort in Guam. Um, and people always say, why Guam? And that's kind of the exactly why Guam, right? I, got, I applied a bunch of places. I got a job offer in Cancun. I got a job offer in uh, Hawaii. And I got a job offer in Guam. And I was like, I'm never going to get the opportunity to go to Guam again. So here I go. And so I went. Um, and it was, it was cool. You know, it was a little teeny island in the middle of the South Pacific um, that was like being in a sliver of California. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it is a part of the United States, and so you're there, and there's like Jenny Craig, a four dealership. Like it's it's weird. You go off 20 minutes off the island, and you're on site Pan, and all of a sudden you're in like this weird, weird third world, rural, jungly kind of place. But Guam, of course, is just a little chunk of good old USA. So I spent some time there, and really what I did there was I thought about, you know, what do I want to do with myself? Like like what do I want to do? You know, not what do I have to do, and not what should I, what should I do, but what do I want to do? Um, and it really came down to me. To I like basketball and I like working out, right? My five foot eleven, two twenty frame says I wasn't going to make the NBA, so I decided I should probably pursue other things. And so you know, I, I sort of racked my brain in terms of what you know, how am I going to work in this industry? The only things that I really like, the only consistency that I've had in my whole life, how am I going to do that? And it you know, it came to me that I should that I should study kinesiology. And so you know, I brought this idea to my dad, and I was like, you know, where should I go to school? What should I do? And you know, he went to. Um, UC Berkeley, uh, and then he uh, also has a degree from SFU, and so he's been to some big schools. My sisters went to SFU. Um, you know, my stepmom was a big part of my life. Went to University of Oregon, um, and so I said to him, "You know, where should I go to school?" And he was like, "You should go to UCFD at the time." And I was like, "That's a little school. I shouldn't go there. I should go to a big school." And he was like, "You know what? You want to study science? You want to go to a small school? They're going to take care of you. You're going to meet lots of people. You're going to get to network a lot, and it's the best place for you." And I was like, "Okay, sure. Like, Dad knows everything. I might as well go to UFD." And so I went and I made an appointment with a counselor at UFD. Um, a random counselor, not, not Corey Jensen from Missiology, but somebody, I don't know. And I sat down with this woman and she looked me in the face and she said, you don't have Vital. I was like, no. She's like, you don't have Chemical. I was like, no. She's like, you don't have Math Law. I was like, no. She's like, why not? I'm like, you didn't have to take those courses. Are you kidding? I'm like, yeah, optional? Yeah, no thanks, I'm good. <laughs> and so she was like, you know that there's more of the sports in Missiology. I was like, yeah, I know. She's like, you know that it's like a science-based degree. And I was like, yeah, I know. And she's like, so realistically, this is, you know, you're, you're really asking a lot of yourself. And I was like, yeah, I know. Thanks for the pep talk, lady. So anyway, so I registered in kinesiology as a mature student at 22. Um, and the first thing I did is I emailed, um, that's your wallet, Wes. It's right there. It's on the floor. I emailed the athletic director at the time, Mark Kosak, and I said, I would like to work with an athletics program. I would like to work in athletics. And I got an email back from him saying, there is a position as a student trainer available with women's basketball. And it, honestly, at the time, my first thought was, at least it's basketball. And all the girls, 
give me the look. That's what I thought. I thought at least in basketball, it's a, it's the sport that I want. You know, I'll eventually transition to the guys game. I spent a year working with UFD women's basketball and coach Al Fuchsher, um, and I knew the level of excellence there was above anything I'd been a part of. The drive of the girls I was working with above anything I'd been a part of. Just the entire system was a culture that I need to be a part of. So I, I was like, that's it. I'm in. I'm full, full in. So I worked as a student trainer for the first year. By the second year, uh, Al had a little more trust in me. He realized that I did actually know a thing or two about basketball. He let me do some game film analysis, break down some players, stuff like that. Worked my way up to my third year to being an assistant coach. Um, also at the time, we were there was no athletic therapy department here back then. It was a closet with an ice cupboard and West remembers. And so we essentially, myself and a couple of student trainers, essentially put together the program that's existing now and running with real professionals doing a real job, not just a bunch of us volunteers. So um, that was sort of the foundation for what it is now, which is really cool. Um, so then I worked up into being a full assistant coach, traveled with the team, started doing more strength and conditioning stuff, worked with Brian and Justin to develop strength and conditioning programs, learn assessment strategies, you know, all the science of training, all the blah, blah, blah that nobody really wants to hear me talk about. And so that really evolved for me over the period of my university career. Um, but there was a whole underlying thing happening at this point. I was thinking, what am I going to do, right? The topic of my discussion here is, what do I really want to do? There's about, I don't know, 20 paid CIS basketball coaches in Canada that make enough money to live, and Al was one of them, and I wasn't going to take his job, so that was probably off the table. Then, you know, I thought about, you know, how do I work with athletes? Well, athletes don't have any money. And so really, if you're going to make a, a living training athletes, you better also have a day job because they're not going to pay you a whole bunch of money unless you're working with the pros. And so I thought, you know, physiotherapy. Every kinesiologist just wants to be a physiotherapist. Why not me too? So I thought about that, and what I did was I latched on to a local physiotherapist. So Dan Boss, who a lot of you probably know, um, I clung to Dan Boss. I shadowed him. I spent time in his clinic. I, I just saw what he did, and I tried to expose myself to what was going on in the world of physiotherapy. And I realized that while it's an amazing profession and it does amazing things, and I love Dan and it's awesome, it's not really for me. I don't want to be in an office all day. I don't want to deal with ICBC. I don't want to deal with WCB. I don't, that's, not, that's not me. So then I thought, you know, I could be a chiropractor. Chiropractors are a little bit more entrepreneurial. You can be your own boss. You can, you can set your hours a little bit more. Your scope of practice is a little bit bigger. I was like, that's for me. So then I latched myself to Dr. Bill Jacobs, who some of you also might know, who's now my business partner. I spent a lot of time with Dr. Jacobs. Um, became really good friends with him, worked with him in university as a laser therapist. Um, and I also realized that while wow, Bill is one of the best practitioners at all that I've ever known, I love chiropractic, it's a huge part of what we do at our facility. It wasn't for me, it's not really what I wanted to do. Um, and so I sort of came to the idea that, you know what, I could actually just be a kinesiologist. Like I could just actually work in the industry that I'm going to school in. You know, foreign, foreign concept to most. And so I started putting the wheels in motion with that. And I, pitch, I pitched a proposal to uh, Dr. Jacobs and Dr. Marshall, who own the building that we're in, to open up a facility, a performance facility, um, and rehabilitation. And so we started putting the, the wheels in motion there. And we ended up uh, you know, signing up with Innovative Fitness. And I'll talk with you two seconds about that in a minute. Um, but how it worked out was I walked out of my last university class to a voicemail on my phone saying I'd been approved for the last rest of the money I needed in order to open our business. And so I went immediately from finishing my exams to opening my own business to four years later, we have 11 kinesiologists that work for me. Um, we're very busy, very successful personal training gym in Abbotsford. Um, and so it was a big transition. But the, the thing that, the underlying sort of thing that I want to take from this is that it wasn't by accident, it wasn't by chance, it wasn't because I was like, oh yeah, you know, my friend owns this thing, so I'll work there and then eventually I'll get a job and then somebody will offer me something there and I'll do that. It was, I know what I want to do, because I thought about it, because I made a plan, because I went after it, and then accomplished my goal. And that's really what I want to talk about with you guys today, because most of our waking hours are spent working. Like, most of us spend our waking hours working. I feel like I should write something, I haven't gotten there yet. So, why is it that we spend our entire life working and going to school and doing all of this stuff to end up in a job that we don't love? The majority of people you talk to, you ask them, do you love your job? And they're going to say no. That was their choice. Now they can say, oh, well, you know, this thing happened, that thing happened. Bullshit. Doesn't matter. You can make a decision. You can make a change. I was 22. I have a lot of people graduating university that I that work for me that are like, oh, you know, it's like, I better, you know, I gotta do this, and I gotta get to school, and I, oh, well, I'm just gonna be too late. And then I'm like, are you kidding? Like, I was starting school when I was your age. We don't have a timeline on this stuff. But what we do have is a general need for passion, to do what we love. Now, 
a lot of athletes will say to me, I'll talk to them and I'll say, what's your passion? You know, what do you love? And they're like, I love soccer. Like, okay, great, that's awesome. Are you going to be a professional soccer player? Uh, probably not. But like, we well, better come up with a backup plan because if the only thing you love is soccer and it has a timeline of five years, rec soccer is only going to get you so far. So what about that do you love? Are there aspects of that that you love? Is it the teamwork? Is it the competition? Is it the challenge? Is it the camaraderie? Is it the organized structure of it? Is it having somebody coach you? What a part of that actually do you love? Because there's probably other things that you could do that mimic that or mirror that in some way to give you some fulfillment in your 80% of your waking hours of your entire life. So the real question is, is you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Now, being grown up is sort of an arbitrary thing, right? When are we grown up? If you ask Roger, he would say probably never. Hey, right, Roger? See? <laughs> So, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you have an idea of your dream job? Have you even thought about it? Have you even put in the time to say, you know what? This is what I want to do. Okay, so now we've identified. Dream job. I'll write something. Dream. Oh yeah, terrible handwriting. I like to write on board, so. So there's my dream. Okay, awesome. Do I actually know what that is? Have I lived it? Right? I want to be a teacher. I want to be a teacher so bad. I had this teacher in middle school. It changed my life. Awesome. What did they do the rest of their year when they weren't changing their life? They were doing a lot of paperwork, they were doing some parents BS, they were shaping other lives, right? Do you want to be a teacher because you've decided that you want to be a teacher and that's what you're going to be? Or have you spent 40 hours in the life of a teacher and evaluated that? You're committing the rest of your life to this thing. Have you thought about it? Most people haven't. They've decided, I want to be a physiotherapist. Okay, awesome, I'll go to school, I'll get my degree in kinesiology, I'll get accepted to UBC, because I have a GPA of four point a million, and then all of a sudden I'll be a physiotherapist, and then I'll be changing lives and loving everything. It doesn't actually work that way. You might actually not like being a physiotherapist. Or it might be the best thing you've ever done in your entire life, but you won't know until you've actually explored it. And that's what I did, I explored stuff. Um, the other thing we want to think about is, is, you know, this is your dream. It's a big, hairy, audacious goal, as we like to call it. You know, are you willing to make the sacrifice that it takes to get there? Like, you need to have an honest conversation with yourself. Are you willing to make the sacrifice it takes to get there? Because we talk about that with personal training clients all the time. You tell me you want to lose 40 pounds. Are you willing to make the sacrifices necessary? It's not going to happen just by you saying you want it, right? People often will say to me, you know, I'll, I'll describe what, what I do for a living, you know, what's going on. Like, oh, I feel lucky. That's so awesome. I'd be like, uh, I sold my car, my brand new car, when I was a 23 year old boy. 23-year-old, cocky, arrogant guy sold my car and took the bus to school so that I could pay my way for the university, volunteered with the basketball team, volunteered with two football teams, volunteered with the soccer team, and maintained a GPA because I was trying to go on to postgraduate school, and paid for it all myself. So am I lucky? I don't know if I'm lucky. I worked really hard, and I had a single-minded focus and passion for what I wanted, and I drove for it, and I got there. So was my sacrifice in line with my reality? Yes. That's one of the biggest questions I want you to ask yourself. Because this dream, you know, there might be a sub sub dream, sub dream that's not quite as hairy or audacious that might be more in your reality. But if we don't pursue something, we're not going to get anywhere. One of the things my dad always told me was that time is going to pass. Time is passing right now. So if you're not doing something, something's going to happen to you. So you might as well do something while time is passing. And that something might as well be in the pursuit of something that's going to actually make you happy in the 80% of waking hours of your life. That's it.